When you come up with this table, this six by six grid that show the results of applying the multiplication mod six operation to all of these equivalence classes mod six, here's the table that you get. So the question I'm asking now is does this table meet the criteria for this structure that we're showing up here to be a group? You're shaking your head, why not? What fails? The identity. All right, so uh, identity, what about it? Okay. So you'd have to like cross those out? You'd have to cross, all right. So let me slow down those couple of steps because I want to pull as much information out of them as possible. So first of all, you mentioned the word identity. What is, or does this group have an identity element? Yes. It does. What is its identity element? One. And why is one an identity element? How can we tell from this table that one is an identity element for this group? Two times one gives me two. One times two gives me two. Right, because what's the defining property of an identity element? When you operate on anything, so one operate G, G operate one, it has to work both ways, that both of these are equal to G. And this is true for all G in the group. And we can see from this table that this, this does satisfy that structure. So the identity property is fine. Closure property. Can we go back to identity Yes, please. So can we have more than one identity element in a group? No. No, the identity element in a group is unique. So if this is a group, which we haven't established yet, so this is a good question to ask, right? If we did see that there was more than one identity element in this table, then either this is not a group, or it is a group and we're listing the same element twice, somehow, right? In which case we shouldn't list it twice, we should just list it once. Um, but yes, a group can only have a single uh, identity element. And that follows from the cancellation property. Uh, that's also part of that same video. Um, identity property is good. Closure property, is this system closed under this operation? Yeah, it's closed. How can you tell from the table? That's right. You never get anything back out that you didn't already start with in the first place. None of the results here in the middle of the table give us something that wasn't already one of the elements from the row and column that we started out with. Right? We don't get anything new in this process. So closure is fine. Identity is fine. What's not fine? Inverses. Inverses. And why is the inverse property not satisfied? The inverse property, well, let's write down what the inverse property is. Um, how does the inverse property work? I want to state it as, as carefully as possible here. What does the inverse property say? Somebody give me their rendition. Um, for every element that you plug in, there should be another element inside of that group that gives you back out the identity. That gives you back out the identity. So for all G in the group, well, supposed group, there is an H such that and when you say you get back out the identity, what does that mean as an equation? Uh, G, times G times H equals the identity. And also, H times G. Right, it has to work on both sides. Uh, okay, so you're saying that this is not satisfied. Why not? We've already heard the answer, but just to, to reinforce it, why is the inverse property not met? Oh, no, I have a question. Yes, question. Um, so what's wrong with the inverse property? Yeah. So for example, zero here does not have an inverse in this structure because there's nothing that I can operate on zero by, there's nothing I can pair it with, that's going to give me the identity and the identity we decided was one. Right? So when we look across this row, we don't see a one in any of these entries. And so it's not true for any g that zero operate g gives me one. And because the inverse property requires those inverses to exist for all elements g, we have found one example where it doesn't hold, and therefore the inverse property is sunk. So we don't, it doesn't work out. This does not satisfy the inverse property. Yeah. Doesn't it also so we can take that a step further, right? Um, not only does zero not have an inverse, but neither does two, three, or four. Right. So looking across their entire rows, 
There is nothing we can multiply any one of those numbers by that's going to give us the identity element one. So all we needed to conclude that the inverse property does not hold was one counterexample. But it turns out that there's four of them. And so what I'd invited you to do on this worksheet was, OK, so now plug up the holes. Try and figure out how we can take information away from this table to make the inverse property satisfied. So what would we have to do? If we wanted this structure to form the structure of a group, all we have to do is patch up the inverse property. But to patch up the inverse property, what do we need to do? What do we throw away? Um, the columns and rows that contain 0. All the columns and rows. Well, it turns out, as you say, it turns out to be all the columns and rows that contain a 0 somewhere. Um, we would actually probably want to prove why that's always the case. Um, I think it is always the case. Um, but let's, let's toss them out. Let's toss out the columns and the rows that have zeros in them, which also has the effect of tossing out those elements that were at the, at the front of those columns and rows. So what we end up with for our new Cayley table is a much less exhausting Cayley table. Okay. All we get, <laughs> if you read between the lines here, the, the only things that survive are the elements one and five. Right. And here's the Cayley table for that. Now, now, with this reduced Cayley table, with this smaller table, can we conclude that the inverse property holds? Yeah. Yeah. We can. The inverse of one is? Because one times one is. And the inverse of five? Happens to be five, because five times five is one in this structure. Great. So inverse property holds. Closure? Yeah. 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 Nothing new under the sun. Identity, yep, one is still here. So now at this point, we have a group. And this is the group that by way of notation, we call this group U6. Um, I know at least a couple of you looked up what the U stands for. Yeah, we call this the multiplicative group of units, mod six. Um, and unit is just a fancy algebra word that means has a multiplicative inverse. Units have multiplicative inverse. All right. So there were six of your groups that all had a different modular arithmetic table to work on here. And the group that worked on multiplication mod six, by the time you pare it down to become a group, you only end up with two elements left. So with that frame in mind, I want you to continue your work on these conjectures and pay particular attention to that last conjecture where I'm asking your teams to decide which of the two groups in this exercise are the same in scare quotes. Oh.